Well, in this video, we want to talk about the idea of therapeutic index in pharmacology. And this is also referred to as the therapeutic ratio. And this is a comparison between the amount of a therapeutic agent, that is the amount of a drug, that will cause a therapeutic effect, as opposed to the amount of a drug which will cause a toxic effect or cause undesired adverse effects because we've given too much of the drug. Now, the joke that's not a joke says that pharmacy is poison in small doses. And there's truth in that because if we give enough of any agent, eventually we're going to get toxic effects because we've got too much of an agent in the blood. But some drugs are more likely to cause adverse effects at lower concentrations. And this is what we need to know about in this idea of the therapeutic index. So what we have here is the sort of graph that we're probably getting familiar with. We've got plasma concentration and we've got time. And I've just sketched a couple of lines here. We've got a line along there to represent a particular plasma concentration of drug. And we've got another line there that represents a higher plasma concentration of drug because that is increasing plasma concentration of drug along there. And that is the time along this axis. Now, if we give a very small amount of a drug, we'll be in the sub-therapeutic range. The plasma concentrations have not reached sufficient levels to give us the therapeutic effect that we want. We have to give enough of the drug to get to the desired response threshold, which is that line there. So if you've got a headache, there's not much point taking 10 milligrams of paracetamol. It's not going to reach sufficient plasma concentrations to have the desired pharmacodynamic effect because the desired for pharmacodynamic effect depends on having adequate plasma concentrations of the drug. There must be enough of the drug in the plasma to have the effect. So if we don't give enough drug, we're in a sub-therapeutic range here and the drug's not going to work. But then when we give enough of the drug, we're going to get a desired response. And that's the threshold for that desired response. Now, if we give more and more and more of the drug and we get up here, there'll come a point where the plasma concentration is so high that above that, we will get toxic effects through overdose. And that line there is the adverse response threshold. So not enough is subtherapeutic. We have to get the desired response, but if we give more and more of the drug, eventually, with any drug, but with some drugs more readily than others, we're going to get the adverse response threshold. And above that, there's going to be toxicity effects. So anything above here, we're going to start getting toxicity effects because the plasma concentration of the drug has become too high. So that means we want the amount of drug to be between there and there, between the desired response threshold and the adverse response threshold. And this range in the middle is called the therapeutic window or the therapeutic range of the drug. So we want our drugs to be in this therapeutic range, this therapeutic window. Not below in the subtherapeutic range, that's no good not above in the toxicity effects, that's too high. And with many drugs, if we go on giving more and more of the drug, eventually we're going to come to yet another line with high concentrations of the drug. We're going to come to another line here. And this line potentially is the lethal dose. So if we give enough of most drugs, we'll get to a lethal dose. So that's all the thinking about the plasma concentration of the drug to get the right therapeutic dose of the drug to give the appropriate therapeutic plasma concentration or range of the drug that we want. So if we give any drug, as we've known before, if we give a drug intravenously, it's probably the easiest illustration that the concentration of the drug will go up rapidly. And then as we know, it will start to go down as the drug is metabolized and removed. 
from the body. Now what this means is that here, remember we're in the subtherapeutic range, so here and here the drug will not be having a pharmacodynamic effect because it's below the therapeutic response threshold. So there it's not going to work. Here it's going to work because we're in this therapeutic range or therapeutic window. We're going to be getting the desired efficacy of the drug. So the drug's going to start working there. It'll keep working there. And you can see I've been quite clever here. I haven't given too much. I'm not going into the toxic range because I know how much to give. But then the dose is going to start declining as it's eliminated from the body. I may need to give another dose, of course, to get that back up as we saw on the half-life video but it's going to be working all the time it's up here so what that means is that the duration of action of the drug the time of the drug is actually going to be active is from there to there that's going to be the duration of action so it's not going to work down there it's subtherapeutic it is going to work in the therapeutic window all that time it will be working. But then when metabolism and other processes remove the drug from the plasma, the plasma concentration will start to fall again. And we're going to lose the efficacy of the drug as it drops back into the subtherapeutic range. Now, why are we calling this a therapeutic index? Well, the equation that we can use for this is this. The therapeutic index, Ti is therapeutic index. So the therapeutic index is the toxic dose over the effective dose. And this is what gives us the margin of safety of our drugs. So the therapeutic index or the therapeutic ratio is the toxic dose over the effective dose. The margin of safety between the effective dose, toxic dose and lethal dose. Now a high or a wide therapeutic index is good for safety. It's a good safety profile of the drug. It means the drug has low toxicity. But a high, sorry, but a low or a narrow therapeutic index is more risky. So a high or wide is good for safety profile because the drug has relatively low toxicity. A low or a narrow therapeutic index is more risky. So-called NTI drugs, narrow therapeutic index drugs, have a narrow therapeutic window because the drugs are more toxic. So let's look at some, uh, try and look at an example of this. Suppose the, um, we give a drug, we want to know the therapeutic index and um, the therapeutic dose of a drug is 10 milligrams. So 10 milligrams is going to be the effective dose of the drug. And suppose the toxic dose of the drug is going to be 100 milligrams. Then 10 into 100 is going to give us 10. So that means the therapeutic index there is 10 to 1 or 10, or the ratio is 10 to 1. So that's the toxic dose when we get unacceptable side effects. That's the pharmacodynamic effective dose of efficacy where we get the effect that we want. It's 10 to 1. Or suppose a drug is um, 10 milligrams again is the effective dose of the drug. And we find that the through experiments that the toxicity dose is 200 milligrams. And you can probably see that there we've got a 20 to 1 ratio. So that drug is going to be safer. Or if it's 300 milligrams is the toxic dose and we still have a effective dose of 10 milligrams then you can probably see there it's going to be 30 to 1. That drug's even safer. But if the drug's only got a suppose it was a 50 milligrams was the toxic dose and 10 milligrams was the effective dose. Then you can probably see it's five to one. So that drug's going to be slightly more potentially toxic. We have to be more careful. Other drugs like digoxin 
I've got a two to one therapeutic ratio. So these aren't dos doses of digoxin, but suppose it was a 20 milligram. Let's keep the sum simple. 20 milligrams was the toxic range. 10 milligrams was the um, effective dose. That equals a two to one. So that drug would have to be much more careful because the possibility of toxicity effects are going to be there. We'd have to be much more careful about the drug and how we give it and how we monitor for the toxicity side effects of the drug. Now, some drugs are classically known to have a, a low or a narrow therapeutic index. So digoxin is one of these, as we've said, it's about two to one. That can cause a heart block in high doses. Paracetamol or acetaminophen. Actually, in the literature, there's doses of where a seven milligram dose of paracetamol or acetaminophen have been uh, fatal. Seven grams. The effective dose is one. So that will give us a therapeutic index of seven to one in that case. So actually quite a toxic drug paracetamol. Normally it might cause, uh, you might need more than that to cause irreversible fatal liver damage, but just shows what a dangerous drug acetaminophen or paracetamol is despite its ready availability. Excellent drug, of course, just needs to be taken in the right dose. Lithium used for uh, manic depressive disease, for bipolar. Um, we need to monitor the levels of that because that can be nephrotoxic. There can be uh, ataxia and dis discoordination and coordination. Warfarin, of course, Coumadin is known for its low or narrow therapeutic index and that can cause bre um, bruising, bleeding, hemorrhagic side effects. Gentamicin and vancomycin are both potentially uh, nephrotoxic and the gentamicin can cause auditory nerve damage, ototoxicity. So again, we need to monitor the levels of gentamicin to make sure we're giving the right amount because it's got a relatively low or narrow therapeutic index. Phenytoin used for epilepsy. Um, that can cause neurological side effects, um, fast uncontrolled eye movements, uh, dizziness, confusion, poor coordination again, slurred speech, so we'll be careful not to give too much of that. And antidepressants, tricyclics, uh, can actually be uh, cardiotoxic and cause cardiac arrhythmias. And perhaps one of the classics is insulin. Um, you know, the difference in one, just giving one or two units of insulin extra, just a few units extra of insulin can cause quite severe and uh, even potentially life-threatening hypoglycemic side effects. So we need to be very careful with these drugs because they've got a, a low or a narrow therapeutic index. They're more kind of down in, in this range here where toxicity effects are more likely to occur as we seek the desired minimum therapeutic dose. But other drugs are safer, more up here in this kind of range. So for example, non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs that can cause gastritis and bleeding, but they're, they're reasonably safe drugs. Benzodiazepines, again, they'll make you very sleepy, but less likely to cause respiratory depression like morphine will. Most antibiotics, uh, diuretics such as fruzeramide and um, the more modern antibiotics, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are, again, safer than the more old-fashioned uh, or more traditional tricyclic. Doesn't mean say they're safe. We still have to monitor our patients for the effect of the drug, but these ones are known to have this narrow therapeutic. So remember, minimum plasma concentrations for efficacy we want, toxicity doses, we don't want and lethal doses we well it's just unthinkable isn't it that we could cause harm or potentially death to our patients.